So after decades and decades and decades of allegations of Jose Menendez possibly being a pedophile, an ex Menudo member has finally confirmed and come forward and stated that he has or is a victim of Jose Menendez. And I'm going to tell you something. This is something that I've known about, believe it or not, since 2007. Going back to the old days of the blogs. Not the blogs, but the blogs. Okay? And I believe that he is going to be the one person who will finally free the Menendez brothers. Because I'm going to say something that is not popular. They should have been freed a long time ago. And I will explain why. Good morning, everyone. It's your girl, Miss Analytical. And I'm coming to you straight out of NYC on this beautiful Monday morning. It's 7 a.m. on the dot. So all my NYC people, stand up if you're getting ready to make that money. Or if you just going to school, if you doing both, or if you just want to go to the corner store and get your breakfast on. Yes, honey. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood for us. I can't speak on others. I just know about NYC. So anyway, for all of you all who were kids or even, you know, children, little kids like myself, back in 1989, you remember a case about two brothers who violently murdered their parents in Beverly Hills, California. It was August of 1989. And I had just turned six years old. And these two brothers murdered their parents and they weren't brought up on charges until a couple of months afterwards. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it was like the beginning of the new decade, the 90s, okay? And what occurred is that when they were appre- if they when they were apprehended, they actually admitted that they did it. They was like, you know what, well, we did this, even though they spent their parents' money. Even though they was living a fast life, even though Eric was training to be a tennis player and a model, they said they did it because their father molested them and their mother turned a blind eye. They had a trial. I believe the first trial was 1992, and it was a mistrial. And in the trial, there were accusations included that they were molested. And that was the central theme of the case, that these brothers did this, but they did it because they were tired of being sexually tortured by their father, and their mother just turned a blind eye because she wanted to live the good life and didn't want to stand up for her children. Okay. After the mistrial occurred, we get all the salaciousness, and we get the, well, during the trial, we get the salaciousness, we get the the spoofs from SNL. This case, it wasn't really taken serious, okay? Because they dressed like preppy, you know, um, young men. They was they was wearing the Lacoste sweaters, which became really popular again. And they were preppy because, you know, they were rich kids. And I just want to say they were originally from Beverly Hills. They were actually from, they were originally born in NYC, raised in New Jersey, most of their life, and they went out to Beverly Hills like to the mid to late 80s, okay? Their father was a Cuban immigrant who moved to Queens because of the devil, Castro. Yes, I said the devil because I'm part Cuban and my family went through hell dealing with his bullshit. That's a whole nother story itself. And also, their mother was Irish American. And the father ended up going to college. I believe he went to university out in Chicago or Indiana to state. But then he graduated from Queens College and always had a complex because of that. Because of two things. One, he wanted to, he didn't really want to leave Cuba. But since he had no choice, he wanted to finish from a really good college, but he couldn't. 
So he ended up graduating from Queens College, which is part of CUNY, City University of New York, which wasn't prestigious at all. He ended up working for Hertz, and then from Hertz, he ended up years later working at RCA. Now, I'm going to pause here because I'm going to talk about a young man named Roy Rossello and how he fits into all of this. Roy Rossello was part of a group called Menudo. You might have heard of Menudo because their most famous member, Ricky Martin, was a member. And really interesting, he, Rossello, and Ricky Martin were members of Menudo at the same time for about a year. So I'm going to read to you from People Magazine about Roy Rossello and the accusations. And it reads, former Menudo boy band member claims he was drugged and raped by the father of the Menendez brothers. Roy Rossello, 51, alleges he was drugged and raped as a teen by the late Hollywood executive Jose Menendez, a former member of the iconic 1980s boy band, has come forward with allegations he was molested by the late father of Eric and Lyle Melendez. The brothers were convicted of the grisly 1989 murders of their parents, Jose and Mary Louise Kitty Menendez, and the family sprawling at the family sprawling Beverly Hills mansion. Jose, 45, a Hollywood executive and the head of RCA Records at the time of his murder, was shot point blank in the head, while Kitty, 47, suffered from 15 gunshot wounds, including one to the face. People, people previously reported. Lyle was 21 and Eric was 18 when the pair carried out the killings. While the privileged brothers initially blamed the mob for the deaths, that is true, of their parents, they later claimed they shot the couple in some defense after years of sexual abuse at the hands of their father. However, a judge deemed the defense inadmissible in court, citing irrelevance. In 1996, and this is very important because I'm going to get to why this happened. In 1996, the Menendez brothers were subsequently sentenced to life in prison without parole for their parents' double murder. Now, more than 30 years later, a former member of the popular Puerto Rican boy band, Menudo, claims he too was victimized by Jose in the 80s. In a clip aired on today, Tuesday, teasing the upcoming Peacock docuseries, Menendez and Menudo, boys betrayed Roy Rosello, alleges he was drugged and raped as a teen by the powerful Hollywood executive. I know what he did to me in his house. Rosello, now 51, says. Oh, no, his name is Rosejo. 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 It's Rosejo. That's the man that raped me, he alleges in a clip, referring to a photo of Jose. That's the pedophile. Responding to the newly surfaced claims that there was another alleged sexual assault victim in a phone call with journalist Robert Rand. Eric, now 52, said, It's sad to know that there was another victim of my father. I always hoped and believed that one day the truth about my dad would come out, but I never wished for it to come out like this, the result of trauma that another child has suffered. Eric and Lyle, now 55, are both currently serving out their life sentences at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego. Menendez and Menudo, Boys Betrayed, premieres May 2nd on Peacock. And although I don't have Peacock right now, I will be getting Peacock because I have to see this. Now, I'm going to go back to what the judge said. And it says that the judge deemed the defense admissible, inadmissible in court about them being sexually abused for years by their father. And he cited irrelevance. And I'm going to explain to you why. Because Mr. Gil Garcetti, the DA of Los Angeles County, did not want another L, which is a loss, okay, of a high-profile case. Because the year prior, Mr. Orontho James Simpson was found not guilty on all counts. And that was a big L that Gil Garcetti took. And it's a known fact that it was known that he did not want to take another L for another higher profile case. That's the reason why it was deemed inadmissible. Because had it been deemed admissible, let me tell you something. They would have still been sentenced. 
but they could have got 15 years to life. Or they probably would have got 20 because they did that. They was going to have to go. But more than likely, they could have got 15 years easily plus time served because they had been incarcerated since 1990, okay? So 96, that would have been six years. And then all they would have had to do was another nine and they could have got out by 2005 and still had a life ahead of them. But they want to be petty and basically state, oh, we're not going to have them um, put the, the rape um, claims in the trial because there was only two people when they polled the jury that said that they was guilty. The other 10 said they was not guilty. So had the other two said it, they probably would have been, you know, they would have walked. And there was a lot of people, believe it or not, that was like, you know, they should do time in jail, but they shouldn't be getting life in prison. And then some people was like, F it. If your, if your daddy raped you, they had every right to kill the daddy. And if the mama turned a blind eye, she should have went down for it too. And then when an old, the OJ trial happened, people forgot about them. Because that was even more salacious than that. And so I'm going to go back to Roy Rosello. In 2007, there was a blog called The Data Lounge. And it was catered to white gay culture. White gay celebrity nets. But they talked about black celebrities on there. But there was a blog entry about Jose Menendez and how this man violated children who were part of the industry, mainly particular in the group Menudo. Now, they didn't mention any names, but they mentioned how the claims of the Menendez brothers was ignored, and they said it was ignored because he was a high entertainment executive who was very powerful and he was connected to so many powerful people that they looked out for him even in death by covering up his accusations because many of them in those circles knew it. And if it would have came out what he did, not just to Menudo, but to his sons, okay, it would have also shed light on many people connected to Menendez, Mr. Menendez, if you get my dress. So they had to sweep this under the rug initially, even before the 1996 trial, by basically saying, you know what, we're not going to put this out there. We're going to cover it up because there's a connection between the Menendez brothers and Menudo. Now, many people have said that Ricky Martin was a victim of Menendez, okay? That was whispered for years. But they had said there were other victims, but it's just that they were not well known. They had left the industry. But Ricky was a victim, but Ricky never did anything to, um, you know, going coming forward. And that he became cool with them to basically have a career. All right? Now, in the accusation from Data Lounge, it said that um, Jose Menendez was violent with the, you know, pedophilia and that they were drugging these boys and they was taking them to places in Beverly Hills and other parts of California and doing the do with them and that if they would have said anything, they would be out in the industry. And many of them came from working class families in Puerto Rico. So they decided, well, you know, I don't want to get backlash and I don't want my parents to find me disappointed because I basically, you know, messed up a good thing. So these boys were, even though they were U.S. citizens, they weren't from the mainland. And believe it or not, that's, you know, like economics plays a huge factor in molestations and pedophilia. More so than, you know, the social aspect of, you know, keeping my place in society. A lot of it's economic reasons. A lot of it is, you know, the pressure of families because in those days, even in the 80s, parents a lot of times believed themselves over their own child. So when the Menendez killings happened, 
because the man was murdered, the people who were his victims, they could never come forward and sue because, number one, it was like their word against a man who was, you know, murdered, and he wasn't there to even state, like, you know, whether he did it or not. There was no money to sue because the Menendez brothers blew it all up in less than six months. They spent it all over the world, and then three... It was once they got arrested, they're focusing on the killings. They never brought Menudo, the victims in, from Menudo, into that trial. Had they brought them in there, they would have basically been able to, honestly, like I said, they would have got no more than 15 years with time served, which would have totaled nine. Because now you got all these executives there. They said that Edgardo Diaz. The founder was in those rooms. They said other executives were there. And the key, and the real key, now I didn't read this from Data Nine. What I read from Data Lounge is that he was very much involved in the group. Because he was the one of the people that signed them to RCA. That's why they was in those mansions with him. And that's why he's around. But the real gag is that he handpicked those members. Going back to the mid-80s, at the height, he handpicked them, including Ricky Martin. Okay? He handpicked those boys. And that is no joke. And it's about time. And I'm going to say this. The Menendez brothers should have been free. Okay? Because, first of all, the Menendez brothers, they ain't about that life outside of killing their parents. The Menendez brothers ain't a threat to society. They was a threat to Jose and Kitty. That's it. They did what they did, and that's that. They ain't going to do nothing else anymore. Their gripe at the world was their parents. They ain't have no beef with nobody else, okay? You can free them boys now. You can free those men. They 55 and I believe 52 coming up. Freedom. And I'm not saying that. Because they're half Cuban. I want to make that I want to make that known. Because Jose Benitez, I think, is a monster. Okay? I'm saying that because right is right. All right? They should be free. And just like other people, they should be free. And I'm going to say this too. Um, all victims of sexual abuse, if you had to commit a crime because of protecting yourself, you should be free. I don't care who you are. All right? Now, do I think the Menendez boys are innocent? No, I don't think they're totally innocent because they lied and said a monster did it. Had they basically first said and told the truth, I do think there would have been more compassion for them. But the fact that they didn't, they basically, you know, it got messed up for them. But what I will say is that had they come, had they talked about what they witnessed, or maybe they didn't witness it with Menudo, and I'm going to wrap this up, I think that there would have been, their sentence would have been mitigated. But I'm happy Roy Vosejo R- R- is coming forward now, because it's about time that this be exposed. And with that being said, I'm signing out. Thank you for listening and tuning in. Have a wonderful day.